this week, DJI released an update for their FPV goggles that adds official support for iNav OSD. There has actually been two updates released. There's an update for the O4E units that fixes the arming issue with the iNav system. But there is also an update for the Goggles 2, the Goggles Integra, the Goggles 3 and Goggles N3 that adds official support for the iNav OSD. What's interesting about this is that it not only adds iNav OSD support for the O4E units, but it also works on the O3E units as well as the original E unit in Vista when used on any of these new goggles. What I'm going to do today is explain exactly what the situation is, what you need to do to get it working, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to enjoy that lovely iNav OSD on your DJI Digital FPV system. Okay, so just to explain exactly what's happened here, because there are two parts to this. There is an update for the goggles that adds support for the iNav OSD, and then there's an update for the O4E units that fixes the problem that was causing it not to arm properly. Now, just to be crystal clear, the update for the O4E unit has nothing to do with iNav OSD itself. It is simply to fix the communication issue between the O4E units and iNav that was preventing it arming correctly. It is the update for the goggles that adds support for the iNav OSD. DJI have released this firmware for the goggles too the Goggles Integra, the Goggles 3, as well as the Goggles N3. When using any of the ear units that are compatible on those goggles, you now have official support for the iNav OSD. There is no need to update the ear units because the OSD side of things is not on that side. It is all on the goggle side. And as a result of DJI adding the official iNav support for the O4, it is also there on the O3 and ear unit in Vista when used on the goggles 2, Integra 3 and N3. Unfortunately, this doesn't add official iNav OSD support for the goggles V1 or the V2 with the original ear units, although it's really not a problem on them because you can use FPV WTF to install the custom OSD feature. What's fantastic about this is that we now have proper iNav OSD support on the newer systems, although it is worth me saying that DJI have still not implemented the ability to custom install your own font packs. What DJI have added is another iNav font pack alongside the Betaflight font pack that you choose in the menu. Now, before I jump into this and show you how it all works, we should give a bit of thanks to the iNav dev team, as well as a number of other people around this, because when O4 was leaking and before it released, we were sort of shown and told that iNav support was coming, but when it released, we found it was missing. It turns out that DJI was actually working on this, but there were a number of issues with it, and the reason it never released was likely because of those issues. There are a number of people on the iNav dev team that have been poking at DJI to try and get them to talk to them. There are people like me who complained about this on release and it seems that DJI did listen and they have worked with the iNav dev team to implement a proper compatible OSD font pack for the iNav system and that's now what's been introduced. Now, to be able to get this working, you need to update your firmware. If you've got O4E units, you need to update them first. So they will arm properly with the iNav system. And then to get the OSD working, you need to update the firmware for your goggles. As I've said, it's available for goggles 2, Integra, 3 and N3. You can see here on the DJI Assistant 2 for Consumer Drones, the version for the goggles 3 is version 01.000800. And when we go into the release notes, it says add support for iNav on-screen display with DJI O4E unit, O4E unit Pro, but it also works with the older ones as well, as I'll show you later on. When it comes to updating the goggles too, it is firmware version 01.012.0000. And again, under the release notes, it says they've added iNav display. I'm not going to go through and show it for all of the other goggles. So as you can see, the first thing you need to do is connect them to Assistant 2 for consumer drones and get them updated. 
On your goggles, under the settings, you will now find under the display settings, there is an option under flight controller for iNav. When you select this, you then need to make sure that you select canvas mode as HD and that way you will get the full available screen area for the OSD. Now in iNav the configuration is pretty straightforward. First of all, under the ports tab, you want to configure your VTX for MSP Display Port, the same as you would for Avatar HD or HD0. There is an option under here for DJI FPV. You don't want to select that one because that's for the older FPV system. You want to use MSP Display Port. Then under the OSD settings, you want to come into here, wait for this to come up, and you want to set the video format either to avatar or you want to set it to a new option called DJI native. Now DJI native is something new that's been added as a result of this but setting it to avatar will work as well. There is DJI HD compatibility mode. This is the old mode that made the iNav OSD work with the old DJI system. But as you now have the full custom OSD, you want to use it with what is compatible and choosing Avatar is the best option or alternatively DJI native. Once you've set that, you can then start configuring your OSD options just like you would when using it with FPV WTF or any of the other systems. Now, as for what versions of iNav this will work with, it should be pretty much all of the recent ones. I'm demonstrating it here on version eight, which is 8.01 on the configurator. That added this new DJI native option. If you're using it on earlier versions, you probably won't have that option but just select avatar instead that will work the same however if you're using the latest 8.01 you do have that new dji native option they are still looking at how to implement this so all of this might change but the safe bet is choosing avatar if you're not sure what you should then do is reboot and then when it boots up you should see the logo for iNav OSD for DJI and that lovely iNav OSD should show up on the screen. Here you can see I haven't got everything enabled but you can see we've got our ladders, our artificial horizon, we've got our additional options for our switches on the side and I've just picked a random selection of iNav OSD elements but what is great here is you have the full iNav OSD available and not that compatible version that you were limited to in the past. Now, just to demonstrate this on O4 a moment, this is my O4 light, which I've got a damaged camera lens on. So I'm going to run it without the lens a minute just to show you as a demonstration. So the on the display, you can see the iNav OSD is kicked in. If I just move the flight controller, you can see the, that it is alive. And that's on O4 with the goggles three here. Just to demonstrate it on other ear units, we're starting with the original DJI FPV ear unit here this will be exactly the same as it is on the vista and the run cam link this is updated to support the goggles too so it's on that latest firmware there is nothing i needed to do on the ear unit we simply enabled the inav osd and you can see that there up on the display and it all looks lovely next moving over to o3 you can see again we have that iNav OSD up on the display. Nothing I needed to do on the O3E unit, just plugged it in and it's all up and running. So it's really great to see that it doesn't matter about the E unit, it's all about the goggle now. So goggles two, goggles Integra, goggles three and goggles N3, regardless of the E unit, will all have that full iNav OSD. So hell froze over and DJI officially added iNav to their FPV system. This is actually really good in the fact that it works with all of the ear units and it fills in a gap that we had because V1 and V2 users would just use FPV WTF. When people who upgraded to say the goggles to or Integra, they could still use those old ear units, but you were giving up that OSD compatibility. And then whilst DJI did add MSP DisplayPort OSD, it wasn't fully featured and it was limited to the Betaflight font set. Now, if you're using those older ear units on your Goggles 2 or your Goggles Integra, you get full iNav OSD, so you somewhat claw back what you lost. You've got your Betaflight OSD, and whilst you can't have all of the lovely custom OSD with the fonts and stuff, this is good enough for 99% of people out there. This obviously does leave 
Ardra Pilot uses a little bit in the lurch. However, I have heard whispers that Ardra Pilot might introduce an iNav font set, which means they can just use the iNav font set that's now in DJI. Whilst it won't give you every feature, it's going to give them more than they had with the Beta Flight compatibility font set. So again, that's only a good thing. It would be great if DJI would go the whole hog and just allow the upload of custom OSD font packs via SD card. Just allow users to put the font pack on the SD and let us handle it and rather than DJI have to handle it. However, I don't think that will ever happen, unfortunately, but you never know. DJI, if you are watching, please just take that extra step and you will never have to worry about this again. Now, Unfortunately, with regards to the firmware update, it doesn't seem to fix anything else on 04. It doesn't fix the issues with the ham file. It doesn't fix any of the other issues that people were seeing. All this does is bring support for the OSD. And we're going to have to wait and see what DJI do with regards to those other issues. But I'm going to be talking about them in a separate video. Anyway. That's it from me on this one. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons we're able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated. We would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.